Uh, Marty Terrell from SiriusXM and uh, Mediacom in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Monte, uh, a lot of guys uh, from Milwaukee on this team, but you're a Flint guy, some great basketball lineage here. Obviously, the nation's looking for you, I guess, to throw this team on your back. Can you just talk about your mindset going into this, knowing you're on that five line and you got a very good 12 team coming at you tomorrow night? Um, you know, the five twelve line is always a line where they say that's where the upsets happen. But, you know, totally we just got to stay focused. You know, we know we're in Milwaukee, but the guys are locked in that's from here and just ready to play good for their homecoming. And we also got to play good to help them. And, um, you know, as putting the team on my back, you know, it's not about that. It's about going out and playing the right way. And um, I got a great group of seniors with me who also plan for some. So, you know, it's not just me. You know, it's a collective group effort. You know, it just starts, you know, with my energy. And um, it twinkles down to Naz, Matt, and Deontay and how we approach the game. And if we come locked in, we should uh, be fine. While we wait for another question, Naz, I'll ask you just your, your mood and the mood of the team as you approach this matchup. Uh, we're excited. Um, we're very excited. Um, you know, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, you know, not many people can say that they've been in a tournament. Um, every year they've been at a school, and uh, we both can. So, you know, we're excited, man. Um, you know, we have a great opponent tomorrow that we got a lot of respect for. Um, but we're playing the best basketball we've played all year. So we're just looking forward to, you know, getting it going in the big dance. If each of you can address this, just playing in the tough conference that you do, how do you think that has prepared you for what you're going to face in this tournament? NAS first, please. Um, well, you know, I definitely think, uh, you know, that's a big factor, if not the biggest. Uh, you know, our preparation all year as far as playing against the best in the, in the country um, is definitely what gets us prepared to play against other teams from different conferences that are, are ready to go head to head and, and do whatever it takes to become, you know, a national champion. Um, so, you know, playing in the Big 12 is definitely uh, to our benefit. We play everybody twice. We get, uh, you know, definitely uh, a lot of different scouting reports thrown at us being the focal points. So, you know, we're ready to go, man. We, we've seen the best. We played against the best, and now we're ready to do the same thing here in the dance. Uh, touching on what Nas said, you know, getting the uh, different styles every night from the Big 12 is um, great for us. And um, playing different types of uh, players on different teams, they can bring you, you know, speed one night, um, just versatility, and uh, just a balanced type of guy you might guard one night. So. You know, when we play different teams in a tournament from different conferences, it definitely give us an edge because it's, it's not a cakewalk in the Big 12. I think one game we play, you know, it was just a blowout or boring game. So every every game was electrifying and we had to bring it. So you now when we switch gears and play different teams in conference in a different conference, um, it's not going to be easier. But we've seen, you know, the best of the best. So we just got to come focus and come with a good game plan. Um, you know, a lot of people come into, you know, the tournament uh, with a mindset that they're going to win just because they're a higher seed. Uh, we've been in that situation in, in the past, uh, you know, but definitely been through in our, our experiences and, and so forth. Playing against Nevada um, is something that we're not taking lightly by any means. Uh, we've watched a lot of film on them uh, as if we were playing them in conference. Um, and we know what they're capable of. Uh, they didn't win their conference or have the record they have by fluke or accident. Um, they have a great coaching staff. so. You know, it's just keeping an even keeled mindset, um, approaching them as if they're the best team uh, that we've ever played. And, uh, you know, just understanding that they're they're capable and they're, they're here for a reason. Yeah, um, just not overlooking um, Nevada. Um, in our previous you know, year, uh, sophomore year, his junior year, we kind of looked over UAB and thought we would just win because you know, we was the higher seed. There was a 14 seed, but, you know, God does things for a reason and just lets you know you got to keep the same mentality no matter who you play at this level. Because everybody's good, you know, nobody's here by fluke. So um, knowing that, we gain knowledge, you know, wisdom, and going to take that experience with us through the whole tournament. For both of you guys, you have one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. Nevada's one of the best at defending the three. What have you noticed about how they go about trying to, you know, slow down 
the opposition's three-point shooting and why they've exceeded in that uh, department this year? Well, they're great in length. Uh, they have a lot of lanky guys, and they're very determined to run guys off the three-point line. We've seen a bunch of film of them just, you know, jumping at three-point thre uh, threats that they've played throughout the year. So, uh, you know, we got to credit them to their urgency on running guys off the line. Uh, with that being said, you know, I think we have a good amount of uh, three-point shooters where, you know, uh, they're not only just three-point shooters, we're versatile. Um, you know, so we can make adjustments just as, as much as they're going to have to make adjustments to the bunch of threats we have. But, you know, you got to give them credit for the way they run guys off the line and make them change their game plan. Monte, for you, I mean, a lot of people have, you know, gone out there and said you're the best uh, point guard in Big 12 history. Has your career thus far exceeded what you thought you were going to do at Iowa State, or is this exactly how you thought it would play out? Um, you know, I came to Iowa State, you know, first for education, and secondly, um, just try to play good basketball and um, be remembered there and um, play with a group, great, a great group of guys. And, you know, my career this far has been amazing. You know, um, I honestly... Can't keep, haven't been able to keep up with what I've been doing. I'm just extremely blessed and um, just have a, a great opportunity in front of me and, to play with these guys. So I'm just happy right now, and uh, I worry about you know my career and things after you know my senior year, and I can look back and reminisce. But right now, I'm just happy I'm in this moment and uh, just soaking it all in. For both of you guys, you talked about playing a lot of different styles of play in the Big 12. When you look at this Nevada team on film. Is there a team they remind you of or maybe another team that you guys played this season for both of you guys? Uh, I wouldn't really say that, uh, you know, because they're just versatile. If, if anything, you know, if we played against Iowa State, that's the team I'd say they remind me of. They're very similar to us as far as having guys that can do different things. Their form man shoots the ball really well. Uh, you know, they have uh, extremely talented guards. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, how we feel about ourselves. So um, that's the team that I'd say is very similar to. Um, that's why it's going to be an interesting matchup tomorrow night. And the, the team that executes and plays the hardest is the team that's going to end up winning. Hi, guys. If you both could answer this, um, I think it's human nature. You'd agree to go ahead and look at brackets and maybe fill them out yourself and have a little fun with that. The reality is you're going to have 80% of the fan base here. Uh, you're favored. So I guess the idea would be if you don't get to Kansas City, a place obviously where you guys have done really well, it would be a disappointment. So does that give you added pressure? I know you're going to say you take it a game at a time, but at the same time, the expectations are that you get, to can you get back to Kansas City and play potentially uh, Kansas. Can you talk about how you maybe block that out or have you kind of processed that in your minds? I mean, um, like at the Big 12 tournament, we knew it was three games total to, you know, win the championship. And we know now um, you got to win two to get back to Kansas City. So we're just going to treat every possession one by one and just knock down uh, 20 minutes by 20 minutes, media by media, and grind it out. Um, I mean, everyone knows. They say they they don't look ahead, but you know what's ahead of you. But you just got to stay in the moment. And whichever team stays in the moment, I feel, would be uh, successful and not looking forward to Purdue or Vermont. So uh, I think that's the that's the route we have to take. Yeah, um, you know, having, uh, you know, like you said, you think 80% of the people out there is going to be Cyclone Nation. Having them behind us is, is everything to us, um, but that doesn't rely any pressure. You know, win or lose, they know that we're going out there to play every possession for them. Uh, you know, we're leaving it all out on the floor. And uh, we've been playing this game our whole lives, you know, and everybody in that Iowa State locker room has been underdogs their whole lives. I mean, I know we're favored, but... You know, I don't remember last game that, you know, the nation really believed that we were going to win those games, uh, you know, and that goes back to playing in the field house. So um, we're just looking to the guys that are to our left, our right, and the people that really support us. And, uh, you know, we're going to go out there and give everything for them. So there's no real pressure, man. We've played basketball every single day, and we're just going to go out there and give it our all and try and get a W. Uh, for both of you guys, again, because you're saying that Nevada looks like a team very similar to your own, where do you see the, the ways in which you guys need to play well in order to win this game, both of you guys, if you don't mind? Um, I think um, just <clears throat> staying in gaps, um, being gap conscious, not giving up a lot of inside paint uh, points and contesting shots. Um, you know, Marshall, he's a, he can shoot the ball really well, and, all of, and Caroline can shoot it good, and Oliver. So um, we just got to uh, contest. You know, contest, contest, and make the shots tough because they're going to heave up some. They're going to make a few, but you just got to make it tough and make sure it's just not rhythm shots. Yeah, j just like he said, you know, uh, just make it tough, make sure they're not in rhythm. And again, if we're as similar as, you know, we think that we are, uh, the team that executes the game plan the best is, is the team that's going to come out with the W. So 
that's just all we got to do, man. Just play the basketball that we've been playing. That's Iowa State basketball. And uh, it's the best we've been playing all year. So hopefully the momentum continues into the dance. Anything else? Guys, thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Thanks. Thank you. Iowa State, Steve Prohm is with us. Questions, please. I think he's got you right in the back. <laughs> I know this is your second year at Iowa State, but there's a long history of, of players coming out of Milwaukee and having success at the school, both current and in the past. How much has that meant to the program, and, and how important are those guys this year to, to your guys' success? I think it's huge. Um, obviously, this program's had a lot of success here. You know, we were just talking about Deontay Garrett, you know, a minute ago. I was talking with Randy Peterson out there, um, TJ Otzelberger, uh, who's the head coach at South Dakota State, that plays tomorrow. You know, he was from here and was a longtime assistant there. Uh, we've got three guys, Donovan Jackson, uh, Daryl Bowie, Deontay Burton, who's had Big, big success. Deontay and Darrell being seniors, Donovan a junior. And so uh, the pipeline's been very good. And so hopefully we continue that. We actually signed a kid, Terrence Lewis, from this city this year. Um, and so it's a, something we can hopefully continue. Uh, the city's been very good for us recruiting-wise. Hopefully it's very good for us the next couple days playing-wise as well. But it's great to be in a location where their families can come and our fans can come. Coach, that being said, uh, we just talked to both Naz and uh, Monte, and that is your fan base is amazing. Uh, the ride up here is just, uh, they're here already, probably 75% of the people. The Milwaukee kids, everyone admits they're looking ahead, they're human beings, they're college kids. How do you keep them in the moment when there's a history of a UAB and you see across the way uh, Middle Tennessee State picking off Michigan. How do you do that as a coach? How do you articulate that to them to get them to respond to that? I think the biggest word that I use a ton with them is just humility. Uh, I think you stay humble. Uh, I've been on the other side coming from a mid-major for a long time as an assistant and head coach to where you know we had beaten teams in the past and advanced in the postseason in the tournament. And so I think humility. You keep them humble. Uh, I don't talk about that. All. One time I talked about it last week, and then that's it. It's not something that you keep beating them over the head with. They understand that I've got great experience with seniors uh, that understand what it takes to win this time of year. Uh, I think the focus of this team is a lot different. Um, I think that they're they're totally tuned in to what we need to do, and then we got to go play. Uh, you know, I heard Monte. I like to always go back and listen to hear what our guys are saying. And the one thing he said is, you stay in the moment and you focus on the moment. And you stay humble, you stay focused, and that's all we're talking about is Nevada. Uh, they're very good. We've got a ton of respect for them. They got a couple. Obviously, they got several high major players on that team. And they got a great coach, a lot of NBA pedigree there. Uh, that if they didn't have all that, they wouldn't be 28 and six. And so we'll be ready to go. Uh, but obviously, being in Milwaukee helps. Uh, this fan base. I've said it since I've got here. Uh, there's probably not, you can't probably name five or ten that are legitimately better when you talk about the way they travel, the way they come in every single night, whether we're playing Citadel, Mount St. Mary's, Kansas, uh, West Virginia, you're going to get 14,400 every night, and that's unheard of, really, when you really look around and put on the TV every night. When you look at film of them, they, they hold their opposing team, I think it was like 30% shooting from three. Obviously, three-pointers are a big part of your game. What do you see on film? Why are they so successful in defending the three, and how do you work against that tomorrow? You know, they do. Their numbers are good defensively, uh, and their numbers are good offensively. That's why they're 28-6. and six. Uh, They've got very good offensive players. Uh, I, think Drew, I think Drew really helps them defensively, very, very active, uh, very long uh, deflections. And I think their team prides themselves on that, getting deflections, being in gaps, um, you know, trying to get their hands on balls, you know, running at the guard sometimes uh, to make you have to make plays. Uh, so the biggest thing with the way we play is, you know, we're fortunate. We've got guys who can make shots, so we want to spread you out. You know, spread you out, make the extra pass, not take quick bad shots. I think tomorrow's shot selection is going to be key. 
you know, you got a lot of people out on the floor tomorrow who can make shots, but are you taking good shots or bad shots? So shot selection will be key. But uh, they're very good. They're a good team, and uh, we're looking forward to the challenge tomorrow. You mentioned on your teleconference that Cam Oliver is kind of the difference between these two teams. I guess what uh, are his strengths? What do you guys need to do against him? And you know his uh, special abilities that he brings to the court. Yeah, they were asking me I think the other day just what are the similarities? And if you know we are very similar, and I think in the way we play, I think coach, both coaches give the teams a lot of freedom. You got guys who can make shots. Uh, you got two successful teams, but um, you know we have versatile four men. We got good guard play. Uh, but our five men, their five men, and Oliver is a is a stretch five. You know, the ball screen with Oliver is going to be a key to the game tomorrow, uh, and how to utilize him and you know him going inside out. And so we've got to do a great job in ball screen defense. Uh, we got to have great ball pressure on him when he catches on the perimeter, and you got to make sure you contest every shot. And then when he doesn't shoot it, you got to do a good job of closing out under control so it didn't drive by you. You know, and we got to be able to get help on him when we need it. And you got to keep him off the glass. And you can't overhelp because you got Caroline going to the glass every time. Uh, I think he's the toughness and glue to their team. And so, but Oliver's a tough matchup, uh, and he's he's one of the couple major keys. Obviously, the rebounding number is more favorable for them. Coach Musselman said he didn't put much stock into it because of the conference you guys play in. Um, how have you thought of your your rebounding ability this season? Um, you know, somehow we've been able to win games. We've been out rebounded 18, 19. The one thing Nevada's done a great job of the last, I think, five games. I think they're plus 14 on the glass. And so that's been a point of emphasis with our guys the last couple of days. But I think when we got Solomon into the lineup, you know, whenever it was, you know, after the Texas game, I think we became a better rebounding team right away. Uh, he provides us a presence up there, uh, whether it's blocking shots, boxing out, uh, being physical, a physicality that he provides up front. And so, uh, shot goes up, you know, I think he, he helps us rebounding wise. The biggest stat the other night against West Virginia, um, I think we were right around even or minus two free throws, but we out rebounded West Virginia. And that was huge for us. We've, we've done a better job over the last couple of weeks rebounding because we had some stretches in during the year now. We give up 18, 19, 20 offensive rebounds, get out rebounded. I think at home against Baylor, we may have got out rebounded by 18 to 20, you know, but still won. But that's because we got an elite point guard and our assist to turnover ratio is really good. While we're on the satellite, just what are the challenges of playing in the last game of the day? And do you want your kids watching other games, or what? How do you handle that? Yeah, the the, the nine o'clock start is you know the last one, so it, it makes it for a long day. Um, you know, I think we played the first game the other day in the tournament. That first to start the tournament in the Big Twelve. Um, you know, we'll get up, we'll we'll eat breakfast, we'll go shoot around, we'll come over here and shoot just because we have a long day, which wouldn't normally we wouldn't do. Uh, then we'll go walk through. And then I let the guys watch games, enjoy the tournament, get the feel. But once you walk over here and you got Purdue and Vermont going on and you got the energy going and you walk out and you got the crowd, it doesn't matter if it's 9, 2, 1 in the morning, we'll be ready to go. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Thanks.